Okay. It's, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. So I, I keep trying to get this case scheduled for a plea. And what I think is happening is they see that he has a felony pending and they keep resetting it on their own motion. This Which is court is this? Well, judge. Who's 12? Uh, judge Huff. And, and I, I've explained to, to Booker, and I'm not throwing him under the bus. No, throw people that, under the bus who need to be thrown under the bus. Well, that just make sure it is of paramount importance that we get this plea done, and they continue. I think he's just brain farting on it, and, and he keeps resetting it because what? of your case. Brain, brain, brain fart. I don't, is that illegal? To yes, it's a term of art, Judge. No, it's so, not a term of art. So they reset it to late January. Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the docket so you don't have to. I'm Phil, and as the story goes, everything is bigger, and in this case, badder in Texas. However, it's badder than them all. Today's docket, we have probation violators, pregnant drug users, liars, criers, and women that need a serious attitude adjustment. So if you're a fan of no-nonsense judges that take no shit from anyone, then this docket is for you. And by the way, do not try playing semantics with Judge Boyd because her mind is, quote, a steel trap. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, set your notifications to all, and never miss Big Bad Judge Boyd. Court is now in session. Let's roll, nerds. Okay. Jenna Rodriguez. All right. Why were you late for court? Uh, the list was really me. All right. Let me just tell you this. Everybody has heard this story from me before. It's a true story. I used to take the bus and I had clients who would be at court for me at nine o'clock and to make sure that I was here on time for the court, I would catch a bus and I would end up getting to court as early as 7 a.m. sometime late as 7 30 a.m. and the court didn't open till nine. So you need to make sure that you're on time for court. If you're not on time for court, then what's going to end up happening is we will help you be on time because the bus schedule from the Bear County Jail, it usually runs on time. And I usually know where people are when they're at the Bear County Jail. And you'll be brought over in a blue outfit and we'll hear your case while you're in custody. Do you understand? All right. So where are we on this case? Oh, uh, Your Honor, the state's made an offer. I haven't conferred with defense since we made the offer. No, we just want a regular reset to uh, go over the offer and everything and come back with the. Do you have all the discovery? Yes, I do. Have you tendered the offer to your client? Yes, I have. Right. Is there going to, Ms. Rodriguez, are we going to have any issues with you with drug testing? Are they going to be clean? Should be clean. What does that mean? Should be. Because here's the thing, I'll have you tested today. I have some concerns. So if I drug test you today, what are the results going to be? What could it possibly be? Here's the other one. I asked the same question. She said possibly. Marijuana and what else? What have you used in your past life? Now, here's what everybody will, will tell you. I'm sure your attorney has told you. You're here for a theft case. Um, and from speaking to you, it appears that there are other issues that are going on in your world. And I'm okay. trying to figure out what those issues are. You understand? All right. So I don't know what you're using. I think it may be more than marijuana. Um, I'm going to give you a reset, but let me forewarn you. Whenever you take a drug, whatever it may be, there's always a chance that that's the last time you're going to take that drug because you may end up having an overdose. So when you leave from this court today, your best options for your best life is to go to an NA meeting or somewhere so people can help you. You understand? All right. 
Uh, Ms. Ferguson, can I have a two week turnaround on this for a plea deadline date? All right, we're going to come back on October 21st. That's going to be your plea deadline day. At that time, you need to let me know whether or not you're accepting the state's uh, plea bargain agreement. You understand? All right, the only reason why I'm not pushing this case today is because I think you need um, help with your attention. And I think that can be accomplished in two weeks. So make sure that when you leave here today, that you go to an NA meeting. They have NA meetings all downtown, so you can walk to it. You don't even need the bus. You understand? And counsel, can you let her know where the NA meetings are located so she can go to that? All right. Do you have any children at home? Okay. All right. Take care of yourself. Okay. Yes. Because they wanted that attorney first, like we moved together. Yeah. All right, the court is calling 2017 CR 9939 State of Texas versus Barbara Shorey. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Marcus Sanders. For the defense? David Player. And are you Ms. Shorey? I'm going to show you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yeah. Okay. You're going to need to speak up. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you the same Barbara Shorey who was placed on community supervision in 2017 CR 9939 for the offense of robbery on June 21st, 2018 for a term of six years? Is that you? Yes, sir. State? Condition number five in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Barbara Shorey did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of July and August of 2021 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that, true or not true? I'm sorry? True. State? Judge will waive the others. Any objections? No objections. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court can find it true, grant the motion, sentence you to eight years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine. Did you understand? Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes, court is finding violation of condition number five true. Is there an agreement? There is not, Judge. All right, State, what are you requesting? Judge, we are asking for revocation. This appears to be at least a, a fourth NPR. I mean, it looks like she's played true to number fives at least three times before. So she's shown that she's not a good candidate to continue probation. So we're asking that you revoke it. Defense? Your Honor, uh, Barbara's just asking for another chance. Um, I think the state, I mean, the probation office is recommending to continue uh, with some other conditions. And why should I consider that at this time? But why should I? Well, she has a long probation and she has a children and... Uh, the, the probation office is recommending safety, so maybe the additional treatment will help us you know, get on the right track. All right, Ms. Shore, is there anything you wish to say? Um, you want to raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, yes, All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. All right. Uh, you want to explain to the court why you haven't been showing up? <laughs> okay, you need to lower your mask so that we can hear you. I'm sorry, ma'am, it's because I'm quarantined for uh, COVID right now. Oh, I'm, well, I'm put the mask on. on. That's all I'm doing. But you need to speak up. Okay. Um, well, this last MTR, I was, um, I did see part, I went to the office and they told me to uh, see the office because um, I, I had told the um the security that i had been exposed to COVID. well see here's the thing the problem is you never show up and when i say never of course i don't mean every single time but i will tell you every motion to revoke we have for you it's because you're not showing up i, I did show up this last time man, but, but they asked me asked no me you to, just played true to asked, not showing up they asked me to leave the uh the office and i stepped outside and i spoke with my probation officer she asked me to go get COVID testing. And I did, and I was positive for it. And I have to report my daughter-in-law and my granddaughter. So did you have COVID in July? Yes, did you have COVID in August? Yes. 
Okay. But yeah. Well, no, I mean, July, I've had it in September, in August oh, and September. Yes. So, so you I didn't have it in July. In August. I'm sorry. I, I, I got out July 28th. I was released. And then in August, I was reporting. And that's when I went to go report. She, they, asked, they asked me to leave the office. Mm -hmm. When I left, I called her and I spoke to her outside. I said, ma'am, I'm right outside your office. Can you see me, please? She said, I want you to go get tested for COVID. So that's what I did. I went and got tested for COVID, tried to um, contact So her. is there documentation for that? Well, I have documentation at, at home. No, 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 no. I mean, I, we're here today for a yeah, hearing. She she never answered my call. She just MCR'd me. Well, here's the problem. Um, you were placed on probation on June 2018. That was before my time. But during my time, you were brought to court on March 5th, 2019 for not reporting. And so uh, your conditions were altered and amended to include McMiles evaluations. And um, you had a TAP evaluation. Then we come back on May 21st, and there's a new number five, which means you're not reporting. Then we come back on May 17th, and it was recalled for May 18th. And then it was recalled for May 21st. Then we come back on May 21st, and it's not reporting. And now we're here for not reporting. I understand. Can I see? Yes. Okay. Um um, the first MPR, my mother was very sick and I had to take care of her. I, I, I went through a lot of stuff with her. The, the next one, I, I got my kids back. And um, since then, like, I've had two of my daughters break and I've been going through the process of CPS, which CPS has been involved in, in um, where, I've been, where I've been staying with my mother and with my children and trying mm -hmm. to get me back because I do not have rights to them because my rights were terminated. Um, so after 10 years, their father, he abandoned them and then they were with their grandfather, which ended up messing them and physically abusing them. And this has all been documented. And, um, I'm just trying, I was just trying to, um, get okay. See, that's them. your, and let me just tell you, you know, who's the cause of that? Not of the fact that yeah. offenses were committed against them, yeah. but their problem is they don't have a single parent who's watching out for them. They have a parent, which is you who commits robberies and does not report for probation. And again, this is um, the third time I believe that we've been here for you not reporting. So I'm going to uh, grant the state's motion. Uh, so the question is, uh, state, how much time are you asking for? Judge, the underlying is eight, so we're asking for eight. Defense? Uh, we're asking for two at this point. All right, Miss Shorey, what should I sentence you? You're looking at eight years, and that's what the agreement was for you to do eight years in prison if you didn't successfully complete uh, probation and you have not successfully completed it. So I'm granting the state's motion. I am going to revoke you. The only question is how much time should I give you? So how much time do you think you deserve? <laughs> I've already had all this time taken away from my kids. So at this okay, point, they are not, children. Yeah, so they're not kids. And number two, the reason why you've had time away from your children is because of you. It's not because of me. It's not because of the state. It's not because of your defense attorney. Yeah, it's, it's because of my past, because of my um, my ex husband and um, student um, being in a physical relationship physically abused and emotionally and uh, mentally and they, they him, him and his family what does that have to do with the fact that you're on probation for robbery i'm sympathetic to your plight I, i'm sympathetic to people who have been victims of abuse i've had people in my family who have been victims of abuse so i'm sympathetic to you I understand. but my question for you is you are looking at eight years in prison the state wants you to do the full eight, which is a part of your contract. Your defense attorney wants you to do two. My question is, what do you think you deserve? Whatever you, whatever you, you find me, judge. Find me, judge. Okay. 
All right. Did she ever pay the restitution of $175 to uh, Rosemary Mauricio uh, probation? And did she complete any courses? Did you complete anger management? Um, I'm not sure if I took the question here. No. Did you, you know if you completed anger management or not? Did, did you? I'm not sure. Probation, did she complete anger management? No, you're Did you pay the $175 to Rosemary Mauricio? So let me ask you this. What have you done since you've been on probation other than not report? Have you done anything? I was trying to get my kids situated. Children, they're not kids. Kids are billy goats. Well, so, children. Yes, my children, I'm sorry. Okay. What have you done since you've been on probation other than not report? Name me one thing that you have actually done started or completed while you've been on probation from my probation um, yes right there I have, it. have you done anything if i get um uh, since i have been employed I mean, that's all i can yeah. that's all i can like okay so you've done nothing she's done a top evaluation and she did a mental health evaluation but the only only the evaluation was completed so, no follow-up from her and then she's only paid a total of 92 dollars 88 of which went to one direction okay we have one neg negative strike test also, yeah. okay. so there is uh to be 87 dollars restitution to Rose Marie Mauricia. And are you expecting or no? No, ma'am. I'm sick for my neighbors. I have to. Okay. okay. All right. They will uh, make sure you let them know at the jail and let them know at the prison that that's an issue so that they can give you treatment for that. Okay. Yeah, I have All right. The court is going to sentence you to six years in the prison. Give you credit for any time served. There's to be no contact with Rosemary Mauricio and her family or her residence. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is, um, you do have a limited right to appeal. I'm sorry, can I see that again, please? You do have a limited right to appeal. And that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations, not the fact that you're on probation. Do you understand? Right. Uh, your attorney will explain to you the appeal process. All right, because um, this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes, yes. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? Yes, yes. All right, good luck to you. We can go off the record. Here's the thing, Ms. Shorey. It appears that you may have a drug or major alcohol problem. You cannot be in your children's lives and actively be there if you don't take care of yourself first. And that means getting your um, uh, drug issues under control, taking care of your mental health issues, taking care of your medical health. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. You're welcome. Who's here? And I remember when it was 1980, we thought, oh my gosh, it's 1980. Now, look at us now. I won't say <laughs> what I was going to say, so. Oh, but I, I know what you were thinking. <laughs> yeah. Why is the color so off on the TV? It is very off. Uh, I have no idea. Because you were getting somewhat to a whole dish. 
tone up there. <laughs> like it's, it's green. It's like I'm a green, you know, maybe I'm with uh the great kazoo from the Flintstones. That's my childhood. Well, that's why I'm going to Halloween this year. <laughs> oh, you yeah. are? I'm, I'll be Fred. Okay. No, really? Or Hayes being Barney my, Rubble. Oh. Yeah. And are you April Sanchez? All right, I'm going to show you a document entitled Motion to Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same April Marie Sanchez who was placed on community supervision in 2020, CR 2524, for the offense of felon in possession of a firearm on July 10th, 2020, for a term of four years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? You should violate it, condition number five. In Bear County, Texas, the defendant April Marie Sanchez did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of January and February 2022 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that true or not true? We'll waive all other violations, Judge. Any objections to the state's waivers? No, no. Okay. Thank you. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 10 years in the prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. You're on regular probation. Did you understand that the court could sentence you up to three years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Did you understand? Yes, Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? No, no, no. Um, so let me explain it. So you've pled true to violation of condition number five. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Now I can find that true and I could sentence you up to three years in prison. I'm sure your attorney oh, yes. and the state probably have an agreement worked out. I don't have to accept that agreement. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you in this court, if I don't accept the agreement that's been worked out, then I will let you know. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't have to, I would uh, give you a chance to work out something else if I don't accept the agreement. Do you understand? Yes. So do you understand that by pleading true to violation condition number five, I could find it true and sentence you up to three years in the prison. Did you understand that? Yes. And up to a $1,500 fine. Yes. Knowing that, do you still want, want to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes. All right, the court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Judge, we're asking that you revoke her probation and sentence her to two years in TDC. That is the agreement, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Sanchez, are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, ma'am. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. The court will follow your agreement. The court will grant the motion. And the court will sentence you to two years in the prison. Uh, there's a $1,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent. Thank court will you. give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, because this is a plea bargain. You're welcome. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, and because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, All right, we can go off the record. I see that I'm the one who set your conditions. And part of the conditions I set for you was CPS compliance and parenting classes because you had children and uh, treatment for your drug issues. You haven't been successful on this probation. Let me tell you something. When you get out of prison, do not go. If your family member has custody of your children, do not go knocking on their door, trying to take over and be a parent. They, because let me just tell you, if Child Protective Services has said that we're giving your children to your relative and you show up and you live there, you're going to be opening your children up to be removed from that location. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I think you would agree with me that at this stage in your life, you're not the best of parents for your children, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go to the jail, 
and I will ask for therapeutic community for her. You want to extend length of time you are at the prison. But when you go there, you need to take advantage of all of the treatment they have available. You understand? Yeah. And when you get out of jail, the immediate thing you should do is not call your children, not call who has your children, but you should be finding a rehab treatment facility. And they have them here throughout town and they're free. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to add therapeutic community for her. All right. Good luck to you. Ma'am, does that include uh, my uh, divine back time and all that? Um, you get credit for any time that you've been in custody. And what about the other use of the vehicle? And the other I'm sorry, what? The other charge I have and the other time. No, I'm not in charge of that. I'm just in charge of what is here, okay? Lauren, I just said it's 229 days. Okay, she'll recreate, receive credit for that. Yes, thank you, Lauren. Right. Excuse me. Yes, you may. Always a pleasure seeing you. Have a good thank one. You, Judge. Always a pleasure. All right. So, Ms. Connor, do you know why you're here? Yeah, so what are you not doing that you're supposed to do? I'm sorry, you need to speak up. No, let me just tell you the report I I've, I've received. Um one there's an issue with your uh testing positive for marijuana. You can unfurl your arm. So why are you testing positive for marijuana? No, I mean, you are, to, it's not a matter of you shouldn't be, you are testing positive for marijuana. So I'm trying to figure out why you're testing positive for marijuana. Are you pregnant? All right. So obviously you keep rubbing your stomach. You want me to know you're pregnant. So I've taken note of the fact that you're pregnant. So my question is, why are you using marijuana when you're pregnant? No, you're still doing things. I, I mean, this is what ends up happening in court all the time. People want sympathy from me and mercy from me because they want to come in and let me know they're pregnant by rubbing on their stomachs and all of this. And then they're not doing things to protect their child by using marijuana and by not taking a ua when the court tells you to take a ua so those are issues now when you do a ua today because you are doing one everyone needs to uh, lower your voice when you do a ua today because you are going to do one what are the results going to be all right you're going to do a ua today and the other issue i have which i don't understand uh the field team visited your home or where you were living there were three small children in the home, ages three, two, uh, and boyfriend's older child from previous relationship was in the home at the time. So why are there so many children in this home? Son was visiting and the three toddlers are mine. So you have three toddlers. How long have you known this boyfriend? Um, six, their father. Okay. And how is your child protective services case going? Fine. Have you been in contact with your worker? <clears throat> Where are you currently living? No, that's not my question. My question is, where are you currently living? So you're not in, are you in Bear County? Did I give you permission to leave Bear County? Now, my question is, did the court give you permission to leave Bear County? That's either yes or no. Your contract is not with probation. Your contract is with the court. So I didn't give you permission to leave Bear County. And the fact that you have so many children living in your house, obviously someone has to do something to protect the children who are living in your house. And the way that is accomplished is by me requiring probation to do field visits. And you are actually on probation for injury to a child by omission. And the facts of that case are the same thing that's happening in this household right now. You got children who are living there, parents who are using marijuana, whether they think it's legal or not, and constantly bringing more children into a situation when you don't have stable housing. I don't understand why people do that. You know, you don't have stable housing. You have 
uh, three year old, two year old pregnant, and then your boyfriend has another child who's coming to visit, people keep having children and bringing them into unstable situations. It amazes me that somebody would make the conscious decision to have a child and now you're living in an Airbnb, don't have a place to stay, you're on deferred adjudication, using marijuana, moving to locations without getting into court's permission. Did you give your CPS work? Did you tell your CPS worker you're going to be moving? All right, Ms. Loper, are you the CPS worker in this case? You're muted. Yes, I am. Are you the CPS worker in this case? Yes, I am. Your volume's not on. Okay, yes, I am. All right. Are you aware of Ms. Connor moving to another location, not in Bear County? I knew that her uh, boyfriend got a job in Austin, but they were supposed to let me know so that I could transfer the case um, to a, a worker in Austin. So that's either, did you know she had left or did you not know? I did not know. Mm-hmm. All right. And then let me just tell you the report I got from no, uh, October 5th, what you're bringing your children to. Field team made contact with the defendant uh, and the following information was noted. Upon entry, the sofa was blocking the front door to prevent the children from walking out, which means that children are not being supervised if you have to put a sofa to block the front door. In the living room, there was a mattress and scattered mess all over. Her daughter was watching TV in the living room. In the front room were her two boys behind a closed door playing on a foam mattress. There was no furniture and the room was a mess. The boys walked out once the door was open. In the back room, there was furniture and personal belongings scattered around the room. In the guest restroom, there was also a scattered me- mess all over. Defendant was advised CSO would be visiting frequently as ordered by the court. Defendant is aware her residence needs to be organized and clean. Defendant stated she is aware the residence is a mess and has not had time to clean, but will. Defendant stated she is not employed at the moment and currently pregnant. So why do you have your children living in a unclean home? So things were a little messy on top of his son coming over and visiting and stuff. And when they came the next time, everything was clean. They even said something about how they had seen an improvement on the mess. So. All right, I want a UA today. Do you need any water? That's either, if you need some water, we'll make sure you have water. Do you need any water? All right. So I'm going to want a UA today and we're going to do it in court today. And then we're going to come back after I get my result. All right, Ms. Uh, Loper, if you want to, we're going to see what the result on this UA is and then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put you in the rating room. Okay. A few moments later. All right. According to probation, you're positive for marijuana. I'm not allowing you to transfer to Austin. So whatever job your husband has, you need to be here in Bear County. And probation, I want those field visits done um, three times per month randomly until further notice so we can make sure that the children are okay. So. I don't know what's happened in your CPS case. I deal with the criminal side, not the civil side. They're allowing you to, to go to Austin. I guess what that's what they're allowing. I'm not allowing it. If you want to be allowed to live in Austin, then you need to do better on your probation. And better on your probation is not having a house that, from the reports I'm getting, is messy 
with couches blocking doors and you testing positive for marijuana and being pregnant. And so that means that either you are using marijuana outside your house, in which case the children are being super unsupervised, and that would explain the couch blocking the front door, which is a fire hazard. If there's a fire in the house, how do you expect firemen to get in the house when you're blocking it with couches? And if your husband or boyfriend or the father of your children doesn't want to step up and help you, if you have medical issues, then maybe you shouldn't be in a relationship with him. But you are setting a horrible example for your child. And I don't know about this other mother who lives, who knows where, allowing her nine-year-old to come and stay with you, who is on probation for injury to a child by omission. People need to stop letting their children just stay with random people that they don't know and they don't know how they're living. So CBS can do whatever they wish, but I'm telling you right now, your probation is not getting transferred to Austin. You're not allowed to live in Austin. You're going to be living in Bear County. And this court is going to have to keep an eye on all of these children who are under the age of three and the nine-year-old that some parent somewhere seems okay with allowing you to supervise. So probation, she's not to be in Bear County. Yeah, uh, yes, Your Honor. And um, if you live in Bear County and you leave this county to go when I didn't give you permission to, a motion to revoke is gonna be filed. Is there anything else? Your Honor, um, a top evaluation was revised to um for a recommendation of safe key i don't show that on here that she has a condition for um, any type of outpatient treatment at this point if you're not going to do a residential mandate um can we ask for intensive outpatient yes treatment? intensive outpatient treatment and i'm going to want her tested for levels in addition can we set a um maybe a clean date or well, if her levels are uh, increasing, file a motion to revoke. So if your levels increase, a motion to revoke is going to be filed. And let me just tell you something. People think marijuana is okay, but let me ask you this. Is it okay for your three-year-old to smoke marijuana? Do you have any problem with that? Of course. All right. So the child that you are carrying that you keep rubbing your stomach and you want me to know you're pregnant guess what when you're smoking marijuana you're letting an unborn child smoke marijuana just imagine that child in your stomach kicked back on a couch smoking marijuana because that's what you're doing do you understand i'm not going to tolerate that because use of marijuana is not allowed on probation out of this court and if your levels rise, we're not going to have a compliance here. We're not going to have a conversation. I'm going to get notice that your levels have gone up and a motion to revoke is going to be filed. And wherever you may be at your home or in the grocery store at HEB or wherever it is, a warrant's going to be issued. And if police see you there, they're going to arrest you because you're pregnant. They will handcuff you in the front, which they're supposed to do. And you will be taken to the Bear County Jail. And while you're at the Bear County Jail, you will either make bond or you will not make bond. If you don't make bond, you will be brought over to sit in the box as you see other people. And we will have a hearing on what to do. And what to do may end up you going to prison for up to 10 years. Do you understand? How often would you like the U.S.? Um, I want it at least once a week. Randomly each week. And so do you still want to pretend to me like you you have not been smoking marijuana? I'm doing anything, Your Honor. Okay. She's still pretending. So I want uh, UA randomly once a week throughout the week. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, CPS, is there anything else you need? Uh, no, there's not. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. All right, Adriana Harrison. And is there someone from the state? Yes, sir. All right, what is happening with this case? Judge, she has um, three new arrest cases and then there's three sealed at large cases. Um, 
because Sir Cox doesn't matter. I guess the discovery on the all of the cases because all of them haven't been indicted. None of those new cases have been indicted yet. So I'm in the process of right now downloading onto a flash drive the reports and the photographs as it relates to each case um, so that you can review that discovery. Okay, so when is that going to happen? I'm as we speak right now, Judge, I'm I'm downloading it on um, on the flash drive. And what are the alleged new cases? So um, they are uh, one assault family choking, uh, one burglary of a habitation with the to commit assault, two violation of bond or protective order by assault or stalking, and then two continuous family violence cases. Okay. And so obviously someone else set bond in those cases and not me. Yes, Judge. All right. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I want this set for a contested hearing and there will be no further resets for this con contested hearing. Can we do this um, mid-November, please? Okay, then she'll be going into custody. I know I just did my Here's the thing. I'm not in charge of whether you whether you have a warrant or not. And your attorney will have a chance to check on that. Uh, so what date, Ms. Ferguson? November. All right, Ms. Dr. Cox, we'll be back on November 15th, and if you'll speak with the clerks, they'll find out why there's a warrant. 5620, State of Texas versus Amber Lay Holland. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Mark Sanders. For the defense? Albert Fosbo III. All right, and off the record for a moment. Deputy Laura, could you move uh, Mr. Mauer and his client uh, down towards there? All right, we're back on the record. And are you Miss Holland? Yes, ma'am. How do you pronounce your last name? Holland. Holland. Okay. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? I did, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Miss Holland, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, Judge. We are waiving count one and proceeding on a lesser included of count two, possession of a controlled substance, PG-1, less than a gram. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. Ms. Holland, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments of Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that the state is proceeding on the lesser included offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one less than one gram? That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea bargain agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes, did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty, not grant you community supervision, and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Holland, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement? No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, 
According to the plea bargain agreement, the state is proceeding under count two to the lesser included offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, less than one gram. There's a thousand dollar fine. State recommends deferred adjudication. And there's $57 to the Bear County uh, Criminal Investigation Laboratory for testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Defense? I did, Your Honor. State? Yes, Judge. Next, I'm showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, I did. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Counsel, have there been any such motions? No. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. There be a TAP evaluation and 150 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the lesser included offense, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State any evidence? Yes, state offers states exhibit one and its attachments. No objection, Your Honor. Ms. Holland, I'm showing you what's entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am, I did. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, I did. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. Evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are we proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, just after reviewing everything going on with my client, we ask that you follow our plea bargain agreement. I believe she's accepting responsibility and uh, wanting to show the court that she can be successful on this probation. So just ask that you follow it. All right. Are you employed? Yes, ma'am. I've been employed at the same company for 14 years. What do you do? Uh, administrative assistant for a construction company. What does that entail? Uh, I do the books. I uh, do billing, invoicing. Do you have any children? No, ma'am, I don't. Do you live by yourself? I live with, I just purchased a home last year. I live with, my boyfriend lives with me. And who is your boyfriend? James Jones. How old is he? Uh, 43. What's his date of birth? How long have you been together? Um, on and off for about three years. So does anybody want to look up Mr. James Jones, 118-1980? Does he have a criminal history? Uh, he got a DWI. He got a DWI, but no. Criminal. Anything else? I mean, years and years ago, like 15 years ago, but not with drugs. What did he have? Uh, I believe it was a robbery. What's the date of birth? 118-1980. Yes. Had a... Um robbery case uh, that he was sentenced in 2000. He got an eight-year sentence on a robbery case on March 27th of 2012. I don't see any other local history other than that. All right. So let me just tell you why I asked that, because people are always like, Judge, why are you in my business? All right. So the reason why I ask these questions of who people are living with is because I want you to make sure that you're on the right track to complete this successfully. I take no joy in people being on probation and then failing probation and maybe going to prison. And I think you don't want to end up going to prison. So um, usually they always want to know who people are surrounding themselves with. And honestly, in the life that um, you have, you only have one life to live. And you need to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with positive people. People say you can't choose your family. That's true. But you can choose to cut them loose if they're not being a positive influence. And you definitely should not be bringing someone into your life that's not going to be a positive influence. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So that's why I ask these questions. No problem. Does he have any children? 
uh, his, they're both out of state. He has two children. Are they adults or no? Oh, no, they're youngsters. Uh, one is four and one is 13. And if you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Negative. All right. Have you ever used drugs? I've used drugs in the past. Yes. All right. What type? Methamphetamine. Okay. Uh, in 2007, I got clean. Um, I've been clean. Not that I haven't relapsed a couple times throughout the years. I have a job. I hold a 802 FICO. I've held the same job for 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very blessed. I'm with Celebrate Recovery. I go to NA and I'm with Revolution Church, a member of Revolution Church. Okay. I've heard of all those things. I've heard of Revolution Church as well. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anything else from either side? I think we're good. There you are. All right. This is what the court is going to do. There is a thousand dollar fine that'll be probated. Two years deferred adjudication. Proof of employment within fifteen days, and I'm giving you fifteen days because you say you're already employed. Uh, there's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. So what that means is if Mr. Jones' children come down to visit from wherever they are and he wants to go do a grocery store run or something else and leave you with the children, he can't. You understand? Yes, yes ma'am. <coughs> There's to be regular reporting that's uh, by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular UAs and probation, if possible, I want a UA today. And so there'll be a UA today. And let me know what those results are. 150 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination. The court is not requiring you to get the COVID vaccination, but if you do, 40 of those hours will be waived. If you want to buy out of your community service hours, that will be at $7.25 per hour, and it can be a donation to um, the San Antonio Food Bank. If there's some other place you would like to donate it to, uh, let me know, and I'll consider it. I just put the food bank because I know that um, sometimes there is a shortage. There's to be $57 restitution uh, to the laboratory for testing. I'm going to want field visits one time per month for three months. And if there are no issues, then the field visits can be um, suspended. All right, probation, is there anything else she needs? No, Your Honor. Is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? All right. And before you do your UA, do you need water or anything? Probably a bottle of water, sure. All right. Uh, so, counsel, your client needs to drink some water before she takes her UA. Of course. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All Thank right. You. Just, yes. Um, well, we may need you to hang around until we have our results. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, could I? Okay, we'll put it at October 10th then. All right, can I see Miss Holland? Miss uh, Holland? Yeah. And could I see the file on that, please? All right, so uh, you want to change, could we go on the, oh, oh that's okay.
That's fine. You want to change what you told the court earlier about your UA and what it's going to be? Well, I thought I, it's been three days, so I did think. No, I no, 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 no. See, here, here, you're playing games with me because yeah. I asked you about your usage and you made it appear as though you hadn't used in forever, which I already knew. Oh, no, I have relapses. No. I do. Have nope, relapses. nope, nope, nope. See, you're you're doing semantics with me and I don't like when people do semantics because here's the thing. I am trying to give you conditions that you will be successful at. Now, let me just tell you what you told me because my mind is a steel trap. You made it appear as though you hadn't used meth for a while. What you told me was, oh, yes, I, of course I've had relapses. But you didn't tell the court that you had relapses three days ago. And you knew that you more likely than not were going to test positive for meth and all of the, the things else that you tested positive for. And I but let me just whether I should come back up and tell you. No, but you didn't. And you, I can tell you what you did because I know what people do. You were praying all your way for that UA. And you were praying when you got, when you requested a, a bottle of water, praying that it was going to be negative. And now it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so now you know what's going to end up happening. Mm -hmm. uh, is that person here, Mr. Um, James Jones? You, yeah, Mr. James Jones, you're going to have to find someplace else to live. You cannot live with her. There's going to be a no contact order. And you know why? You can have a seat, Mr. Jones. You know why there's going to be a no contact no. order? There's going to be a no contact order because I know for a fact that even if you don't intend to get a haircut, if you hang around the barbership, barber, barbershop long enough, you're going to get a haircut. And if you are using, you know what that means? That means that he's using. And that means that he is not a person who should be in your life, mm -hmm. that he is holding you back. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So you're not going to be having any contact with him. Can I take you away? Because I've been clean since right. 2011. Stop. So there's to be no contact with James Jones, and he had better find a new place to stay. And the fact that he's staying with you and is not trying to get you help for your drug use, that's another reason why he shouldn't be in your life. He has. Uh, he's not he good for you. He's not good. For, I'm sorry, what? He just got out of rehab. See, that's the problem. You should not be hanging around with people who just got out of rehab because both of you all are struggling. And the fact that you're testing positive for drugs, and I guarantee you, he can say all he wants. I'll do a UA now. No, he really no. is clean. No. Um, you're not to live with him. You're not to have contact with him. You yes, understand? Yes, ma'am. And if I find out that you are living with him or having contact with him, that's going to be a violation of your probation. And you're going to end up going to the state jail facility. And guess what? If you go to the state jail facility, he's not going to be there with you because it's not co-ed. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So there's to be no contact with James Jones. I'm going to want field visits two times per month, and I'm going to want that random so we can see if she is allowing him to live there. And I'm going to want a TAP evaluation and follow the recommendations of TAP. If TAP wants inpatient treatment, we'll start with outpatient treatment to begin with intensive outpatient treatment. And instead of um, regular UAs, I'm going to want the UA hotline. And I'm going to want a referral to felony drug court. And let me explain something to you. In this court, honesty is really the best policy. Because that tells me whether or not you are in a specific phase of your sobriety. The fact that you're not being honest tells me you're deep in the throes of your addiction. And how old are you? 47, almost 47. All right, so you're getting to the point in your life where you're going to have more of your life behind you than in front of you. But guess what? You are walking on the edge of a knife with that statement I just made. You know why? Because you're throwing into your life the fact that you have um, a drug addiction and you're using drugs and you never know what you're going to get. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So Mr. Jones is out of your life. And I know you love him. You probably think this is the end of the world, but guess what? This is not Romeo and Juliet. You're not a teenager. He hasn't been in your life as long as you've been alive. So you need to sell away from him. All right. Do you have any questions? If you violate this, 
you're going to be coming over here answering for this case in a blue uniform. And you know why it's going to be blue? Because you're going to be in custody. Yes, ma'am. I want this pension. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. It's until further notice. I think we're one week now. I think he's just brain farting on it and, and he keeps resetting it because what? of